الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله أبدأ بخير الكلام كلام القرآن الذي نزله الله على قلب خير الأنام رسول دين الإسلام محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام يقول الله جل من قائل بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون فالله أكبر الله 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 أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله وبحمده بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا عباد الله نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا عباد الله اليوم يتخرج المتقون من مدرسة رمضان اليوم توزع هدايا الرحمن على الذين امتلأت قلوبهم بالإيمان في شهر التوبة والإحسان في شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فهنيئا هنيئا في موسم الحصاد هذا اليوم الذي تجمع فيه الثمار فمن زرع جوعا وعطشا يجني اليوم ثمار الصبر والذي زرع قياما يجني اليوم ثمار التقوى والذي زرع تلاوة للقرآن يجني اليوم ثمار المعرفة والذي زرع سحورا في الليل يجني اليوم ثمار البركة والذي زرع صلاة تراويح يجني اليوم ثمار الطاعة والذي زرع بر الوالدين يجني اليوم قبولا من رب العالمين والذي زرع صلة الرحم يجني اليوم بركات وبركات فهنيئا لكم في موسم الحصاد في يوم الحصاد في هذا اليوم الجميل المبارك يوم الفرحة يوم الفرحة الذي جعله الله لكم عيدا قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرحوا هو خير مما يجمعون صدق الله العظيم Dear family Dear children Dear brothers Dear sisters Dear friends 
And please allow me that I had started by addressing the children first. Because this year, probably for the first time for many of us, we have witnessed Ramadan to be the month of children. The month of the happiness that the children displayed because it coincided during their summer holidays. And we've seen them coming in large numbers to the Islamic Center, running to establish an act of worship that was filled with excitement. We've seen how excited they were, how curious they were to ask questions, the kind of questions that demonstrated that inside them there was an urge to compete in goodness. And in that, they were applying the commandment of the almighty, all-loving, all-wise God. When he told us in the Quran, فَاسْتَبِقُوا khayrat," Compete in goodness. And the children did a wonderful job. So allow me one more time to greet them and to look at them and tell them how proud I am and the rest of the community are of the children who are establishing a strong personality and identity that they can be proud of. This is a month wherein its permanence in our lives is very important. We did not enter into the month of Ramadan so that today we will abandon the legacy that we built over 29 days. We entered into the month of Ramadan so that we can establish a strength of commitment. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْوَمُهَا وَإِنْ That the most beloved actions to the all-loving, all-compassionate God are those actions that are permanent even though they may be little in influence. So if you will continue after Ramadan with the tradition of reading the Qur'an, understanding the Qur'an, being benevolent in sharing what the Almighty had given you with those who are less fortunate, reaching out to those who need to know about your Islam, trying to embrace members of the human family and show your real personality and your real Islamic tradition at a time when Islam is being looked at with a spectacle of skepticism. And so be it, because people are curious to know what you stand for at a time when the world had gone mad, when we've seen the killing to be the norm at a time when people are killing in the name of God, hating in the name of God, telling others, exclusively that we are the people of God and no one else belongs to the love of God. At such a time, with these circumstances, it is you, the young Muslims, who are being looked at as instruments of violence, instruments of instability. You do not need to fight back with anger and show that, no, I am not. You don't have to say it that way. But all you have to do is to live your Ramadan, to live your Quran, to live your prayers, to live your zakat and charity, to show what real Islam by example, that's all you have to do. Because in the example of Prophet Muhammad, you have the best of demonstrations. He came with the final message of submission. The final message that was brought before him by Adam and by Abraham and by Moses 
and by Jesus, peace be upon all of them, those messages of love from the same God of love, when he finalized that message through the revelation of the Quran, people rejected him. People called him names. People did not accept him. People accused him of violence. People accused him of all sorts of things. But he persevered and he stood with the mercy that God had given him. And he embraced the close and the far. He embraced those who shared love with him and those who rejected him. And in no time, even the staunch enemies of Islam came and embraced Islam because Islam, as they realized, literally is the attainment of inner peace through full submission to the will of God. The peace you experienced on the odd nights of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. The peace of the night of Qadr. The night of Qadr, which was described in the Quran as better than a thousand months, which is equivalent to 83 years and a few months. Imagine. Imagine 83 years can be condensed in one night. The peace of that night, as the Quran says, Salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr. It is peace and the demonstration of peace and the sharing of peace experienced until the break of the dawn. That peace of Laylat al Qadr. The peace of standing facing Mecca in prayers every night at our Islamic center. The peace of touching shoulders in unison before the God of humanity, the God of this universe. The peace of sharing our wealth with our brothers and sisters and our families in Somalia and Kenya and Malaysia and Palestine and Kashmir and the rest of the world. One can talk about hunger and thirst and poverty as long as she wants, as long as he wants. But poverty will not be understood until and unless you experience hunger. And this year, it was, wallahi, I say it without trying to polish my words. This year, and for the years that will follow, if God would grant us life until then, that as the days grow longer, it will be a mercy of God that we will experience hunger and thirst for long hours of the day to appreciate those images we've seen on television and on the internet of people who were forced to fast without the promise of breaking their fast at sunset. There were millions of people who were deprived of food and of water with the promise that God put for them that there will be other members of their family who would send them the food that God could have sent them. But he said in this life, there will be alternation of hunger and fullness of peace and war so that those at peace will share their peace with those who are less fortunate until we all graduate into the hereafter. Dear brothers and sisters, did you realize that with the one million Canadian Muslims who were required through the obligation of the charity of breaking fast, Zakat al Futr, which is approximately $10 per individual, young or old, did you realize that we have given before this prayer this morning $10 million in charity at least. $10 million in charity. And this is something 
that is expounded when we realize that we did skip one meal. Call it lunch. Imagine ten dollars every day per individual and say out of the million, half of them were required to fast. Imagine 15 million dollars added every day on the 10 million, 25 million dollars in charity being given to those who are in need other than the charity of our wealth. What that means, what do you know about the wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had tested us with? And I would like to call with our friends who are embracing us with happiness in this blessed morning. And I am going to share it with my fellow chaplains, with the London police force. And I am proud that I did wear my uniform that was bestowed upon me as a right of a citizen of the city of London, as a privilege for one of the citizens of London representing the Muslim community with pride. And the police chief is here. And the diversity officer is here. And please allow me, not because he has to represent the Muslims, he doesn't. But he is our own chairman of the London Police Services Board, whom I'm going to share this idea that London would go out to the rest of Canada and work starting from today on an interfaith day of fasting next year where we will call on all Canadians, on all 35 million Canadians to give up one meal during the next coming month of Ramadan with five dollars from every 35 million Canadians to be given in charity to those who are in need. And we are told by the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, the UN FAO, that all it takes is 30 billion dollars per year to eliminate hunger and poverty in the world. The Almighty gave us Ramadan so that we can share it with pride with members of our family, members of the human family. So let it be a practical fasting next year. I am again saying with pride that could it be the London Police Services Board that will endorse such an idea to serve and protect the poor of this city and of Canada and of the rest of the world through the legacy of the month of Ramadan. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فيا فوز المستغفرين Make dua, supplicate the Almighty on this beautiful day of celebration. There is a second short sermon and make dua in between. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم. الله أكبر 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 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم التائبون العابدون الحامدون السائحون السائحون الراكعون الساجدون الآمرون بالمعروف والناهون عن المنكر والحافظون لحدود الله وبشر المؤمنين صدق الله العظيم These are the descriptions 
given to those who experienced the fasting of Ramadan. Those who did not only abstain from eating and drinking as such. Those who worked on their inner self to become better human beings at a time when humanity is being hijacked by humans. Humanity is still humanity. Humanity is pure because it is the creation of the Almighty God entrusted with humans. But the Almighty told us that when humans abuse humanity, they can become worse than Satan. And if they will uphold humanity to the levels allowed by the Almighty God, they become higher and better than angels. Humanity is it, brothers and sisters. Humanity is entrusted with us. What are we doing with it? We are using it to kill. We are using it to make the poor even poorer. We are using it to claim that we have the right and others don't. We are using our humanity to terrorize people. We are using our humanity to make societies less peaceful and less secure. We've got to stand up as people of faith. And I don't say as Muslims only, even though it is by implication all peoples are submitters. If we go back to the definition of what Islam is all about, submission to the will of God, all of us. And we've been told that in the traditions of all peoples before us, there was fasting. Jesus, peace be upon him, fasted. St. Paul commanded the early Christians to follow suit and fast. Gandhi fasted. The Buddha ordered people to fast. And many others. Wellesley, Luther, and many others fasted. And we continue to experience fasting in many communities. The Lent, Yom Kippur, and many other seasons of our friends. Yes, our friends, people of faith. Don't let political hijacking of faith distance us from the people of faith. A Jew need not be a Zionist. So a Jew is a person of faith and he is my brother. A Christian is my brother. A Hindu, a Buddhist, a Sikh, all of them are brothers. And we need not be hijacked by political alienation and political separation that is plaguing the world. As people of faith, after we finish, stand up in celebration. And after you finish visiting your families and your friends and embracing and visiting the sick at hospitals and visiting the graves of those who continued their journey of life before us. After that, if you happen to be going back to work, please share your Eid with those who will receive you at your offices, at your places of work with congratulatory notes. Embrace and share your Islam with them. And let us start a chapter of Ramadan spirituality with the people. Let us start spreading the idea, inshallah, of a day of fasting with sharing a lunch with the people of the world. Let the city of London be an example as it has been in many areas. Remember that if you fast six more days in the month of Shawwal, it will be equivalent to fasting the entire year. Don't give up that opportunity. Try to continue enjoying the spirit of Ramadan and remember that even though the world 
continues to suffer and I am not ignoring what is happening in many hot spots in the world. But let me tell you that the spirit of Eid is a spirit of happiness. Yes, the people in Yemen and Syria and Libya and Egypt and Tunis and Kashmir and Gaza and the rest of Palestine are happy this morning. Don't ever lose sight that they may be as they continue their struggle to reach freedom and raise the banner of freedom, they are happy. Because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, As-sururu min sha'airi hadha deen that happiness is one of the rituals of this religion. Don't deny happiness from anyone because a struggle is a form of happiness. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to make a supplication. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al wal hazan. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from worrying and from depression. Oh Allah, make me happy all the time. And may you enjoy happiness this morning. May you enjoy a beautiful day. May you enjoy a spirit of communal togetherness. And may we be grateful to our friends, to Chief Duncan, to uh, 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 Marcelin, to uh, Ed Holder, to uh, Muhammad Deeb, and to all the friends of our community who came to be with us. God be with you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa Eid Mubarak.